Hey guys, this is Ix Rollin' Ix with Rollout Reviews doing another Bionicle Let's Build. This time we're taking a look at Akimu the Mask Maker, who I suppose technically is the first set in this wave, but I'm doing it this way because I prefer to interpret the story as Umarak puts on the Mask of Control, summons the beasts, and only then does Akimu tap into the full strength of his mask and swoop in to help the Toa. But without further ado, let's set last year's Akimu off to the side and take a look at the packaging. There he is, all powered up. And all of the translucent plastic sort of reminds me of like a green lantern using their ring to project armor on themselves. In this case, of course, he's using the Mask of Creation to give himself this upgraded form, which is kind of an exciting idea. This is an experienced user of a legendary mask, using its abilities to their full potential. Last year we saw Skull Grinder trying to use the mask, but he was sort of a novice and only scratched the surface. This year, of course, we're also seeing Umarak trying to use the mask of control, but its power has sort of consumed him. This is a guy who knows what he's doing, and I can't wait to see how they represent the power of creation in this summer's episodes of Journey to One. I guess we'll find out. Another interesting thing is that this set comes with a recolored version of Umarak's original mask, and he's stepping on it on the front here, and he's seemingly trying to destroy it with his hammer on the back, and I have to wonder, what does that accomplish? It seems to me like he should be trying to knock the mask off the destroyer and then replace it with this to sort of restore him back to normal, but uh, what do I know? Again, I guess that's another thing we'll find out. Here's the comic on the back here, but let's waste no more time and finally get this guy open. See what's inside. One bag, two bags, and that's it. Barring the instructions, of course. We'll set that off to the side. Let's uh, let's flip through the instructions here first. Got a little man sorting his parts out. Let's see how many pages the instructions themselves are. Thirty-four with a parts inventory, the poster, the comic, and this wave's combiner model. So, let's finally open up the bags here. Lots of translucent blue. I'll pan down here in a second so we can take a look at the pile. Got a smaller bag of tiny itsy bitsy parts here. Open that up as well. And then one bag with seemingly the majority of the gold parts. There we go. We just pan down here like usual. There is our nice pile of parts. Let's bring the instructions in. And of course, I'm going to do a quick cut, bring the camera up, sort all these parts out, and then finally we can get building. Alrighty, back with all of our parts sorted into individual buckets, but before we start building, let's take a look at some of the new or interesting parts in this set. First of all, you have this, uh, well, it's not new, but it's a Hero Factory piece of armor. I think this is the first time we're seeing it in a Bionicle set. So there is that. We also have the Carriage Wheel. He has basically the same shield as before. However, it's blue this time instead of silver. So that is kind of neat. Of course, we have the Trans Blue Mask of Creation, which is just as detailed as it was before. Very, very nice looking. Here it is with the golden one. I kind of like it. And then the second mask here. It's actually 
an orange and gunmetal version of Umarak's original hunter mask. And here that is alongside the black and green one. Kind of cool. Then, of course, we have the crystal armor piece, which is used for his hammer this time, which means he doesn't have the six-shooter in his hammer, which is a little bit disappointing, although it is worth noting that this is the only wave of sets since G2 began that doesn't have a six-shooter piece in its lineup. So, take that for what it's worth. And then here is his chest piece. It's basically the same mold as all of the Toa. However, it's molded in trans blue. It's got this golden printing on it that actually has all six of the Nuva symbols, or Unity symbols, on it. I wonder what the significance of that is. Ikimu also has his own separate little symbol here, which looks like an anvil with a hammer on top of it. So that's kind of cool. Again, I wonder what the significance is. It's also worth noting, something I didn't notice before, uh, unlike the Toa, the symbol is not on the top of his box here. So, hey, there's that. Anyway, with all of that said, I suppose we should move these off to the side, open to page one, and get started. Okay, let's see if I need to move things around. If I learned anything from the Quake Beast Let's Build is that if I start crossing my hands too much, it gets a little bit chaotic. So for now, I think I'm going to work with the Technic pieces here and the CCBS pieces over here, and we'll see how that goes. But first, wow, I'm already crossing my arms. This isn't working. <laughs> let's, uh, let's switch those. Okay, so, I think this should be fine. Um, but, I'm gonna start like this. All right, <laughs> I've made my decision. Those go together like that. I think this is a frame that will attach to the torso and uh, attach his either his arms or his shoulder armor. I guess we'll find out. So that goes together like that. It is kind of refreshing starting a build uh, without the main torso piece first. So, I'm sure it's not uh, too long before we get there, though. need two of these, and then I also need two of these little cylinder pieces. So, let's find those. And... Slide them on like this. And then those go there, I think. Does that go like that? Yeah. And then we get our torso piece and slide it on like that. Now we need the waist section. Yes, yeah, so Akimu continues his trend of being a little bit more deluxe than the average figure. Before he had basically the protector build, but with an additional gearbox, and this time he's a little bit more deluxe than your average Toa. While he can't unite with a creature, he has both style of gearboxes, in the waist and on his shoulders. So that's sort of neat, we'll see how they play together once he's built up. But first things first. We need to slide that through here. Oh, actually, this is backwards from the orientation I thought we were building it. I thought that was the front, but it turns out that it is the back. Let's get that gear straightened out here. There we go. Now, we're going to set this off to the side just for a moment and build the second gearbox. It's almost nostalgic, in a way, remembering back to uh, 
2015, early 2015, when the reboot hype was happening, and I first got, you know, that Tahu set. <laughs> and building one of these 2015 style gearbox reminds me of that. Gearboxes, rather. Okay. So this is his solid arm, seems like. Actually, just to be particular, I suppose, goes in like that. And that goes like that. Okay. First gear. And then it seems like he uses the friction system, the friction method that Onua uses. So he's got a real big hammer. I suppose that makes sense. And I do think that uh, Onua's friction method was among the best out of the Toa. So let's just get that like so. And then we need another one of these. A couple of ball joints. A bushing. And we're good to go, I think. Just like that. Second ball joint. And just like so. Very simple. Oop. Just got to make sure to line it up here. <laughs> More difficult than I expected it to be. There we go. Yeah, and that'll give a whole lot of friction. And then, of course, we need the back gear. Which, even though it's this style of gear function, uh, still doesn't have any of the yellow gears. So I suppose that's a little bit different. A little bit less conspicuous very tight so then this um just attaches back here like that now i think these pieces go on here then he actually uses uh, this style of armor from last year. Well, I guess it's on a couple sets from this year, too. This is actually kind of weird looking. Looks slightly less metallic, this gold, than I remember. Maybe it's just my imagination, but it definitely seems a little bit different in color. Uh, that happens from time to time in Lego sets, depending on, you know, what factory they're made in or what mold they use or just how the plastic was mixed that day, uh, can be a little bit different in um, texture. Okay, now, let's set this over here, and we're going to build the legs. No friction extenders in his ankles. All of the Toa this year, if I remember correctly, uh, had friction extenders in their ankles. And actually... Rather short legs, so even though he's taller than his past form, I imagine this guy's going to be still pretty short in comparison to the other Toa. I do kind of like that. Probably going to need to build two of these, so before I turn the page, let me do that. Lot of trans blue in this set. So, there you go. I do need to add a friction extender to the hip here. Ta-da! Okay. Now, simple enough. Two more shells. Are there only shells in this size in this set, I wonder? Or are there any larger ones? Doesn't look like it. So, that is going to go on here. And that's gonna go on here like this so kind of similar to last year he's got you know uh, gold lower legs and 
blue upper legs, although he has blue, f or not blue, gold feet this time rather than silver. But, yeah, his legs are quite short. If I had to guess, maybe around the same size as Pohatu's, but we'll do some comparisons later. <clears throat> Having trouble getting my words out. <laughs> That's what happens when I get too lax in these videos. Kind of just easy going and I forget to talk. So his arms are actually asymmetrical, kind of like 2016 Onua. Because he's got a big hammer holding hand. And uh, these sort of pieces, I imagine, have a little bit more friction than, uh, than just a ball joint does. Or at least Lego seems to think so. So, suppose we'll believe them for now. So yeah, it turns out those ball joints at the very start were for his shoulder armor. But, second arm here is all blue, like this. I'm also noticing this is the only set in this wave that has proper hands, too. Or non-customized hands, I suppose. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I suppose you can decide. That is something I'm noticing here as I build him. There aren't a whole lot of surprises going on. He just He's almost like a, a perfected version of the Toa we've seen thus far, I guess. With a couple little, uh, little additions, but again, those additions aren't necessarily anything new. All right, so chest piece goes on here, like that. Covers everything up nicely. And uh, he still has the swooping shoulder armor from his last form here. Very iconic for Akimu at this point, I think. But it does attach a little bit differently to his shoulders, like that, instead of upright. Kind of bare at the back, but that's all right. And where's the other one? There it is. Okay. So if you line it up in this certain way here, the, uh, the shells do kind of cover the printing on his chest a little bit. So you can kind of do that however you want, I suppose. The main body here is actually almost done. I think all that's left to do is his head here. So, I need the head, of course. I also need an axle and his eye stock, which I think I put in here. I'm also realizing I put uh, Umarak's green mask over there. That's not supposed to be in this set. I suppose I got sidetracked when I was doing that comparison. But, goes there. And just like all the other sets in this wave, he has the older style of eye stock instead of the shorter one from last wave. So, that's him built. I'm not going to put his mask on until last, because that's kind of how I like to do things. But I will set the built figure off to the side until we've assembled his weapons. So... We got this piece here. I don't think we've seen this in a while, have we? Maybe we did. Maybe I'm not remembering. But yeah, that's the uh, attachment piece from 2008, I believe. Um, cylinder. A little cylinder here. Just like that. And like that. And then, this thing is very simple. Not a whole lot of gimmickry going on in this weapon, unlike before, unlike, you know, uh, Onua's weapon. And, uh, of course, Akima's weapon from last year. But, that goes there, like that, and then... Well, at least this part's kind of similar to his weapon from last year. 
use one of these pieces, slide that through like that, and then that goes on here. And I think we might slide something through there. Yep. Called it. Okay. Ta-da. And then I'll actually attach another one of these pieces. Oh, hey, our first empty bucket here. Just bring that up there like that. Attach this, and then our crystal piece goes on, I'm sure, in a particular way. Doesn't matter. I, I still, like, five sets in, I still don't know if these are supposed to go on a particular way, but I'm just going to put it there like that. <laughs> and that goes on there. And we're actually uh, emptying two buckets at once. So let's put that there and that there. Three to go. And that is the head of the hammer. It is cool looking. Uh, I just kind of wish it did a little bit more. Like if it had like a, a rocket booster on the end here, that would be awesome. But uh, alas, it's just that simple. And now we can give this to our main man here. I don't know, him having all six symbols, does that mean he's he's the leader? I suppose he is, in some way. Hmm. Still thinking about that. Anyway, let's give him that, set him off to the side one more time here as we put together his shield. And the shield is actually kind of cool because it attaches to his arm. Um... Actually, does it matter which way this goes? I think it's supposed to go this way. It's a little bit difficult to tell because it's translucent. So the orientation, these little divots show through kind of on either side. But anyway. That goes on there. And I've always liked the way how that looks. Especially with the translucent behind it because you can, you know, see all the detail when you shine a light from behind. But his shield this time actually attaches to his forearm instead of him just holding it with his hand which means he can actually wield his hammer with two hands which is an excellent display option i'm glad they thought of that so yeah you got this thing here i think this is just all the extra pieces there Quite a few, actually. Actually, at least one more than I think we've seen so far, although maybe uh, the Destroyer had more than I remember. But anyway, this comes back in. And that just attaches to his, his arm like that. You can still spin, of course. And a uh, cool thing is you can actually like move it like this. So if you want to like sideswipe people with the buzzsaw, instead of using it as a shield. So it's kind of like both defensive and offensive on a completely uh, advanced level than it was before, I think. But there he is. So let's get everything situated here. Get some of these out of the way. Here's the two masks, of course. Set everything off to the side and Let's mask him up. And there you go. Ikimu the Mask Maker. Very cool. Pretty simple, but very cool nonetheless. Of course, now that we have him complete, I want to go over some first impressions and end with a few comparisons. So as I turn him around here, I have to say, this is a pretty solid figure. Right now, I don't have too many problems with him, other than the fact that maybe he's a little bit simplistic. As I mentioned earlier, there aren't too many surprises going on here, and some people might take issue with the fact that there's just so much trans blue going on. I do like the way his shoulder pads sit. They sort of sweep onto his back, and I think they're a great solution to the fact that maybe this sort of gearbox looks a little bit disconnected from the chest sometimes. It covers up a lot of those gaps, and I think it's a better solution than really any of the 2015 Toa had. 
it does hinder his shoulder articulation a little bit. I found this armor kind of got in the way in a few poses, unfortunately. You do have the 2016 waist swivel gear function, adding a little bit of extra motion. And when he's holding his weapon in two hands, you can twist the gear back here, and he will swing it. Unfortunately, mine is horrendously squeaky, but that's kind of a luck the draw quality control thing. The tolerances on yours may vary. You can also hold his weapon with one hand here, and when you just pose him, I think he holds it up just fine, but if you turn back here and twist the gear, I think uh, that ball joint is a little bit too loose. He probably could have made use of a friction extender up there, but oh well. You also have his little buckler here, which can manually turn. And, as I showed off earlier, you can bring it out as kind of a saw blade weapon. Although it is mounted off-center, which could annoy some people. Moving on to comparisons, here he is with last year's Akimu, and he's actually just about doubled in size, which is pretty impressive. The Mask of Creation definitely looks better on the larger body. Although I do wonder how permanent this upgrade is. After he's done tapping into the power of his mask, does he revert into this protector form? I don't know. While we have him here, though, I do want to swap the masks and see how that looks. Over here, I think I could take it or leave it, but let's see this side. That's actually not too bad. Not sure I like it any better, but uh, I don't think it's any worse. I'm going to switch over to this one again, though, because I think the trans blue is maybe a little bit more interesting. Setting him off to the side, let's bring in the tallest of the beasts. Here he is next to Lava Beast. And, would you believe it? He's actually a fair bit shorter than Lava Beast. At the tip of his crown and at the tip of this guy's horns, he doesn't quite come up. Which is surprising. I was not expecting that. That of course means he's also shorter than any of the 2016 Toa. He is a fair bit smaller than Pohatu. Which again is a little bit surprising. Now here he is next to last year's Umarak. And the only reason I'm doing this comparison is so I can show off the new mask that comes in this set on this guy. The gunmetal and orange hunter mask. So let's do that. Keep in mind this guy is just about as tall as 2016 Tahu, so you can use that for reference, of course minus the horns. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad, the orange definitely stands out, but I kind of like the gunmetal. And then, finally, here he is next to the adversary from this wave. Umarak the Destroyer. And these guys look pretty cool opposing each other. Kind of a Mask Maker versus Skull Grinder thing going on again for this wave. You have the big bad versus the big good. I don't know. Two legendary masks, though, going up against each other, which is kind of a cool idea. And as I mentioned in the Umarak the Destroyer Let's Build, honestly, I'd kind of like to see Akimu fail in this battle. I just feel like... Ikimu coming in and saving the Toa two times is probably once too many, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, thank you guys for sticking around and watching this series of Let's Builds, and of course, until next time, this is IX Roll at IX, signing off.